These are the moments when you know that when I'm producing this kind of content that I'm doing so because I'm holding true to what I am and the purpose that I serve, which is to be a blind film critic and to talk about audio description because it's very likely this review will get me almost no views. I cannot imagine that this is going to take off. I don't know who would want this, uh, but it, ha it has to be said. Uh, we need to talk about Hop. This is the new series on Max. And uh, I watched the first two episodes. Yes, my grown-ass adult self with no kids watched two episodes of a TVY show. So let's talk about it. But first, click subscribe. Because if you don't have a blind film critic who's talking about audio description and accessibility, then why not have me in your rotation? There you go. I just, I just, I just pitched myself to you. If you're with the production company of Hop, um, I think what you've done is you've made a really good show. I think you, uh, it's from the creator of Ar Arthur, uh, which was you know, such an iconic show for so many kids who grew up in a certain generation. It's not really my generation. I didn't really watch Arthur. I kind of remember Arthur from books, the art, you know, the nice little art, aardvark, cute little aardvark. Um, he wasn't really part of my childhood. My childhood had a whole bunch of, um, you know, my learning shows looked like uh, what did I have? Like Sharon Lois and Bram's Elephant Hour. Um, I had Sesame Street, obviously, and uh, Eureka's Castle. Um, I'm trying to think of some of the, the big ones that I remember from back in the day. Uh, there was a series called David the Gnome that I loved. Uh, I used to watch early in the mornings. Um, those were some of the shows that I remember. There were some other ones that were not educational. You know, like some Saturday morning cartoon stuff, Bobby's World, and uh, I just kind of lived in a time because it was before streaming and uh, even before Cartoon Network, uh, when really we just had like Nickelodeon and, and kind of Disney Channel, and we had blocks of, of television that were devoted to kids' uh, Saturday morning cartoons, but we also had like the little blocks right after school. And you got to plan your your time around that because there really wasn't a lot except Nickelodeon uh, to watch. So my programming was really targeted, thought out, um, and you had to know where it was and when to watch it. Now it's on streaming and there's a lot of stuff like Hop that can get lost. Hop is a show that is about uh, differently abled creatures that are having sort of preschool exploratory adventures uh, to help young kids um, uh, realize that they can embrace the differences in themselves and their friends around them. Um, its main character, Hop, is a frog that has one leg that is shorter than another. So that is his uh, different ableness. You would have no idea in, if you were blind. And following the audio description, the show never mentions it. A show that is about putting, you know, disabilities and making them visible, ironically does not make them visible to the blind uh which would fall under the set, the category of disability. Anyway, it's such a weird show to have such crappy audio description on. If anything, this show should have sort of like award-winning audio description. Like audio description should have been the kind of thing where they really took it to the next level. This should have the most creative an engaging audio description for children because it's most likely to attract blind children to watch it because it's embracing the idea that you can be different, that you can have um, 
be a little bit differently abled or or uh, in in different ways. Um, I I don't I don't know how to say this in a broad way because like sometimes I think like having Hop as a as a frog who has one leg shorter than the other is different than having a character who's scared of everything. Is that differently able? I don't know. You know, <laughs> is um. I guess that's that's representative of, of maybe a child who has like a severe anxiety disorder, but uh, that one would definitely be hard to translate onto screen. But Hop certainly isn't, and there's no mention that his leg is shorter than the other anywhere. Uh, the show doesn't even bother to narrate the opening title sequence at all. It's totally not described. It's just dead silent. Um, so you would have your kid would just sit there and listen to like meanwhile excited kids are like wow look at all the bright colors and characters and your blind kid is just sitting there going i don't know what's going on mom what, what, what is this you know um they didn't even bother so uh you wouldn't even know the show was called hop Honestly, like, if this was in, like, d days where you, like, rotated through shows, there's no indication that this show is called Hop. <laughs> None. <laughs> there is no indication. Because it doesn't even say the name of the show. Anyway, um, yeah, so there's Hop and the Hoppers. Uh, I think they're, at one point in, in the narration, it referred to them collectively as the Hoppers. Uh, and they have these various adventures, um, and, uh, they all have sort of different quirks. If you want to look up all their different, uh, things, they're all available online, but, uh, you wouldn't pick up any of them in the audio description. But on top of that, you wouldn't even know what animals these are. They're not even, they're not even given description as animals. These are all various different animals. It's one of those shows that's like uh arthur where we have all of these anthropomorphic anim uh, animals that have you know that can talk and uh they you would have no idea because they could be anything uh the audio description is atrocious it's offensive and um the company that makes it should probably stop uh, but you know what's hilarious is it actually, it gets slightly better between one and two, which makes me think, did you guys record episode one and then realize it was inadequate? And then when you went and recorded episode two, you were like, oh, well, we fixed that problem. But then you didn't go back and fix the problem for one. So for episode one, they have the guy that's currently doing the narration for The Good Doctor and Abbott Elementary. I think he also did the traders for Peacock. It's a very droning voice, uh, not a great one. If you are the vo voice talent for this show, uh, if you if you know who you are and you you happen to be watching this video, my best advice to you, uh, I like to cultivate relationships. With, I have a lot. I know a lot of people who do narration, um, so I don't want to be mean. Um, you seem to be getting hired by companies that are not producing good audio description. So there, there's something about you that is attracting people to hire you for these situations. Every time I hear your voice, it's never with a show that is, is able to create good audio description. You are not being given shows that represent you well which is going to create forever an idea that you do not describe things well. Not that I think that you have a great voice. You especially have a horrible voice for shows aimed at preschoolers. Um, it's There's nothing that's imaginative or inventive. This is totally about casting. But even just with adult content, you're not being attracted to shows that have, that are well-written. Um that have good scripts to begin with. So the fact that they offered you this and you narrated the first episode of a show and there aren't like, you, there are no descriptions of any of the characters and that didn't strike you as odd. <laughs> you know, I mean, 
I don't know. Maybe you didn't know it was the first episode. You just knew it was an episode of Hop. I don't know. Uh, there really is nothing about this that's, that, that, that serves as a pilot. You know, like, welcome to Hopland. Let's introduce you to the characters. It doesn't really do that either. So to be fair, it could have just felt like any old episode and maybe they're just putting him out in whatever order. But so you've got this guy doing this and there are no character descriptions. No, none of the animals. Second episode, we jump in. It's a completely different narrator. It's a narrator that is absolutely appropriate for children's television. He talks to you like you are five. Um, and I appreciate that. And I'm not mad at that at all because this is a show that is aimed at five-year-olds. So you should absolutely shoot, should have an audio description narrator that feels like it's engaging a five-year-old. It doesn't need to engage an adult. I don't need to feel engaged. This is not aimed at me. But I can be concerned about the kind of lack of audio description. A five-year-old is not going to get on YouTube and tell you how disappointed they were, you know, because they don't know what these animals are or what makes them different. Uh, I have to do that. So, and actually that's why I'm doing this is because a friend of mine uh, brought up this concern to me uh, after having watched the show, presumably with his kids, and bringing up a lot of real valid concerns. So I was like, okay, I'll check this series out. I don't, I usually, admittedly, do not watch TV Y shows. <laughs> um, so, at least not the ones that are new. I, I watch some stuff from my childhood because it's, I'm, I'm big into nostalgia, but not from, not the new ones. Um, and everything he said was right. This show is a mess, audio description wise. Even though you switch up the narrator for the second episode so he sounds better for kids, there still isn't anything there in terms of who are these characters, what do they look like, and what makes them differently abled. This thing that makes this show special that everybody announced, if you were to Google the show and to see the announcements of the show, the the whole thing, it, the thing that they're excited about, the thing that the the show's creators and producers are talking about, is the dip, the the fact that you know they've got a differently abled uh, cast of characters here, and that is what they're selling. Is that uh, the show? It will teach kids and also uh, help give kids you know that that feeling of visibility within uh you know that they're that they're that they're being seen and heard and represented and all that kind of stuff like it's it it's it does both if you're not differently abled uh it shows you that you can be and you can still have fun adventures too and if you are differently abled then it gives you somebody who's just like you on television it's one of the reasons why Sesame Street keeps creating all of these different puppets that have all of these different sort of unique circumstances. Uh, some of them are kind of depressing. You know, you have like maybe a, a Sesame Street character who whose parents are divorced. And the reason they do that is because there are kids that, that are going through that. And if they can come up with a scenario that'll help a kid sort of relate through that situation... Uh, then they see themselves in that Sesame Street character and in that episode. And um, there's something where that kid goes, oh, there's someone who's going through what I'm going through. So remember, this is in an age where you take a kid to Disney World and they believe that that giant six foot uh, whatever Mickey Mouse is the same mouse that's on the TV screen. Uh, <laughs> so... Yeah, it's it's easy to sell this, um, but uh, any anyway, um, this is this is a mess of audio description. Max owes everybody an apology. Uh, the audio description company that is making this audio description uh, should be fired, and a new company should be hired, and um, they need to redo the audio description. I mean, completely redo it because. This is, again, you've made a show that is about differently able people without acknowledging any of those. Um, 
And so your differently abled audience, which is what exactly what would be using the audio description track, is sitting there and instead of feeling included by your inclusive show, they're feeling excluded because they don't even know what the animals are. You can't, you couldn't even say, it's not even like you didn't, I get it. It's hard to say the autistic squirrel, you know? <laughs> neurodivergent squirrel i get that. That, that that's hard to say in the in the in the description because it's it's a thing that that is not externalized it's inter it's internalized and it's like how do you just drop that in the audio description that one's probably probably was up for debate um hop has has one leg that's shorter than another that's a description uh, that is something that, that is, is visible that you could see. Uh, but one thing you could definitely can see is what each one of these things are. They are definitely different creatures. And you couldn't even do that. You couldn't even do that. You have the entire title sequence, by the way, which you're not even using. You know, you're not even using the title sequence. You could use the title sequence to describe some of these characters. You don't even do that. So what is the point? What are you doing? Anyway, um, as much as I support audio description, I do not support the company that made this audio description. I don't support anybody who, who touched it. Uh, if you wrote, if you narrated, uh, actually the second narrator is not bad. He was a, he was a good hire. The dude got brought in and uh, plug, plugged one hole. But I'm sorry, man. The, the, uh, the, you, you know, you're like the, the boy that's holding the dike back, but you got your finger in one hole. There's like 20 holes. Uh, run. Just run. The, the, the dam's about to burst, man. Uh, <laughs> you know, it doesn't get away. No. Second, second episode voice absolutely should be narrating children's television. First episode voice should be nowhere near children's television. First episode voice, if I heard it, I wouldn't want my children around it. <laughs> It'd be like, there's nothing about this voice that that signals to me that this is for kids. Um, yeah, this is just the whole the whole thing is is just a mess. So uh, I had to talk about it. Uh, like I said, it wasn't. Even, I'm not even the first person to complain. Uh, I, this is coming off of another uh, friend of mine uh, who complained about it, and. Uh, valid complaints. So, um, I, I guess this can fall under my gratings of pilots and stuff. The thing is, I want to make very clear here because I think what the show is doing is excellent and for TV, why? And again, if I had kids, I would love to watch the show with them. Um, and as a blind person doesn't necessarily mean I would produce blind kids so I could watch this with sighted kids and I would make sure that my sighted kids are watching this um, regardless. So, but some parents have blind kids and they're sighted and their kids are not. Um, and, and then sometimes you have both. So um, there's so many different situations. Uh, I would say Hop is a series, um, grade A. I think it's delightful. I think it's cheerful. I think uh, absolutely you're on point. Hop's audio description is an F for failure. So, uh, yeah. Um, I, I don't really know what else to say about it. It's, it's, uh, it's, it, 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 it achieves nothing. It says nothing. It has nothing to do or say, um, the best thing that they did for the show was that they found a narrator, uh, but they didn't go back and fix the first episode. They were just fully comfortable with that first episode having a narrator that is inadequate and releasing that to the world. It's like knowing you produced something that was shit and you just kind of just left it and you're like, ah, who cares? Nobody's going to really watch that. If you're not, if you don't take pride in the work that you do, then don't do it. Anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And I'll see you guys on the other side.